Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Risa, and this is Talent Talk. On today's show, we have acclaimed singer, songwriter, record producer, Charlie Berry. But before we get to our interview with him, take a sneak peek at his latest single, Wish I Would Have Said That. Baby, I love you. I know I don't say it enough, but I need you like crazy. I don't know why I gotta make it so tough. I just wanna hold you every day for the rest of my life. You're the only one I want standing next to me until the day I die. I wish I would have said that when you got mad. And started packing your bags Last night we had a big fight And you up and told me goodbye I should have ran out the front door And chased out to your taillights To give me one more chance To get you back Oh, I wish I would have said that Well, hello, Charlie. How are you? Hey, y'all. I'm doing good. Well, Risa and I are so excited to have you on Talent Talk, and the audience has got a little sneak peek of your latest single, Wish I Would Have Said That. Incredible. I want to know, first and foremost, Charlie, uh, how that whole idea of the song came about for you. Okay. Um, the idea, I was listening to a 90s country playlist uh, while I was <laughs> mowing lawns a couple years ago. Uh, to, to make ends meet, I had a little landscaping company, AKA, uh, when I say landscaping company, that's really overstating it because it was <laughs> me. <laughs> it was me and a Honda mower, push mower, you know? And uh, so anyway, I was out mowing lawns, listen to this thing and uh, listen to this playlist. And there were, there were a couple songs from, uh, from that playlist that, that were like really hitting me. And one was, why didn't I think of that? Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> and and um, let's see, what was the other one? I can't remember, but uh, yeah. So I was like, I want to write something like that. I like that. And uh, you know, I'm a guy that overanalyzes every conversation after the fact. Sometimes it takes me two or three years, but I can usually come up with just the perfect thing to say. Um, but you know, usually <laughs> well, the moment is long gone by the time. Never late than never. Yeah. Better late than never. What's the expression? I think that's okay. right. One of those is right. <laughs> Thank you for that affirmation, Charlie. Yes. Risa, I know you have a question for our amazing oh, guest. Many a question. Um, my first probably is, though, because I don't think we've ever talked about this, is like, was there a moment when you knew, like, this is what I want to do with my life? Was there one that stood out mm. to you? First of all, just full disclosure for the audience, Risa and I are like best friends. This is true. She's one of my <laughs> favorite people on the planet. I just... We're not going to do this and not talk about that. Okay. Wow. So, I love so, it. We're digging deep, baby. <laughs> we are. Actually, I can't help it. Hold on. We're best friends and our daughters are best friends. True. Our daughters are best That's right. friends. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Oh yeah. my it runs, gosh. It runs deep. It runs yeah. deep. Okay. Thank Why you. am I even here? Uh, you're the whole reason <laughs> this you. is happening. I'm glad yeah. you're here. This is your show. Okay. No, Listen it's our show. But go <laughs> okay. ahead, Charlie. So th this is like, uh, I was, I actually just watched y'all's Julia Cole interview and uh, it was really cool that she had like a moment. I had like yeah. 20, you know, it was like, and, and of course, looking back on, on a decision like that, you see and are able to put all the pieces together of like, oh, of course I ended up here. But, but um, growing up, uh, watching my dad sing in a cover band, um, my dad was so charismatic such a great front man and so watching him do that you know in the way that a lot of like young men are like well of course I'm going to be a hunter I've watched my dad do that we do it together you know it's like that kind of thing like that was my benchmark of like okay you're, when a boy turns into a man he gets a microphone and he gets oh on stage <laughs> and he entertains what? and wait a minute and, yeah I, just, I want you to keep going but I need to know the name of your dad's cover band Okay, so it was Phil Alpha and the Mystics, and he was Phil Alpha. <laughs> he was oh Phil Alpha. Okay, yeah. I love it. Keep going, yeah. keep going. Sorry. Okay, so so uh, 
Yeah. So, so kind of thinking that that's what you do, you know, uh, and, and then learning that this could be a career songwriting, singing. Um, one of my dad's best friends growing up was a guy named Tom Douglas, who is a hall of fame country songwriter. So, you know, I remember him coming in and, uh, he would always play whatever he was working on. And there were always cassettes of his demos, you know, sitting around, but, um, he came over and played the song Little Rock by, you know, that ended up getting cut by Colin Ray. It was like the first draft on our out of tune upright piano. And I remember it was, it was kind of pushed up against the wall and he sat there and we were kind of staring at his back and like he turned around and everybody, I, I just remember the mood in the room was so strange to me. I was a kid, you know, but everybody was silent. And, and I remember him going, Tom, that's really good, <laughs> you know? And, and uh, so then he made the move to Nashville and has obviously had a lot of success. And so that, that really made it feel possible to me, uh, a well, career in music. Well, look at Charlie. You not only have an amazing skill set as a singer and a songwriter, but also as a record producer and a multi-instrumentalist. In 2016, for those of you who don't know, your trio Mockingbird Sun parted ways. Many musicians would have thrown in the towel. What you did, my friend, is you said, let me risk it all. And you went to Nashville and you went for it. And thank goodness you did. Because out of that, in my mind, when I was reading about it, I'm like this Phoenix rising, you, out of that came an amazing, an amazing self-produced debut, Whiskey. Tell me the full title of it. Whiskey, take it easy. I mean, it's such a left footed title, but it's, you know. <laughs> but like, I mean, I love the tune. The audience right now, while you talk about it, is going to get a little sneak peek of the lyric video of it. Talk to me about A, that decision for you to risk it all and just go for it. And two, that it was whiskey, take it easy. That was kind of like the culmination of you doing your own thing. Hmm. Good question. You know, the I didn't spend a lot of time considering quitting, but it was there. The doubt of, was that it? Was that the career? Was that the whole thing? You know, and I think that, you know, as, as musicians, again, looking back on a career, you look back and hope that you haven't passed that moment, you know, of it's over or it's it's done. And, and I'm, I'm a really hopeful person. Um, so jumping back in um, after the, the band breakup, it was the death of a dream. And I just had to realize that that, that wasn't the whole dream, that I still had a lot left to, to say and a lot left to give and a lot left to do. So um, jumping back into it, um, after the heartbreak of that, of that band breaking up um, and, and really buckling down on uh, songwriting, you know, the, the, when I when I jumped into music, the first thing that got me was not the songs. It was the energy and the, you know, the punk rock of it, you know, like just all of that. <laughs> and so I really backed into lyric writing. Um, the other guys in my band were actually more into lyrics than I was. And so wow. I really learned a lot from them and really realized like the beauty of a well-crafted song uh, in addition to the excitement of listening to, to a great production. So, um, yeah, when I jumped into songwriting, I really had my eye on being a solo artist for, for a long time. But to tell you the truth, when when that band broke up, my personal life imploded. You know, the my life on the road had been kind of propping up uh, a lot of stuff that just kind of fell apart. And so it was a reforming of an identity, a, a refocusing on a dream that I've had, you know, since I was a child and uh, really have approached it uh, with a lot more conviction and focus than I ever did with the band. Um, the story behind Whiskey Take It Easy is, uh, you know, we were writing a song that was uh, basically like a scorned lover. And, and by the time we got to the chorus, we were bored. It was like, we've just done this so many times. You know, we've just, we can't, fit, I can't keep writing the song. Like, let's go get lunch if we're gonna do that, you know? And um, anyway, it just ended up, it ended up like, well, what if we're singing to the, you know, the alcohol and, and 
uh, we're begging for mercy, but but not for ourselves. You know, when you break up, you don't always fall out of love. You know, sometimes it's something's just over. And uh, so this is a guy that's still, you know, really in love with this girl and, and is begging for mercy. Beautiful, it's beautiful. I, I have to affirm something really quickly just because I've been in the writing room with you several times before the last few, maybe the next question, but like, it blows my mind that you maybe were not as much of a lyric writer as you are now, because I feel like in every song we've done together, you've upped the ante in the room with what you write, what you say. Um, and you know how to color things in because I, just for an example for people that don't know, I'm like, for me, I'm very literal. I'm like, I was walking down the street and they'll take it and make it like this beautiful <laughs> That thing. you're selling yourself a little short. No, but, <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's so cool because because you you grew every part of your artistry and that is mm. just like very brave to dive into and do. So yeah, thank you. Good stuff. You're welcome. <laughs> so a comment on that. I don't want to take up too much time, but um, you know, I can't, you can't give away what you don't have. Mm. And I think my personal life breaking apart took me to depths that can now come out. You know, I can't lead you somewhere I haven't been. And so like oh so a gosh. lot of the times when I, when I sit down to write, I have this like well now of like, well, I've been there. I've been at rock bottom. I've That's been, right. I've had great days, you know? And so you can go, you just get much, a much broader sense of the human experience when you've lived it. And, and so, um, you know, whereas with the band, I just, I wanted loud drums and guitar riffs and why do we have to waste time with lyrics, you know, and uh, <laughs> uh, it really did become, thank you for saying that, by the way, I don't know if I said it, thank you for saying that, um, but uh, the the expression of, of the human experience really became a lot more important to me. Charlie, you know, um, I love that this is a mutual adoration society and loving to see two best friends talk with one another, and you bring up a really good point. You know, as artists, especially both of you also being amazing songwriters, it's amazing not only the opportunity that you have as songwriters to express the darkest and the deepest, but also like congratulations to both of you to be able to do that, to have the courage to seep into the vulnerability and the nuance and the mess, because although it may be quote unquote hard, how amazing a gift that is that you are giving to others who can relate. Charlie, that theatrical scene that you built, I'm a theater director, so the scene that you built of an individual literally and figuratively talking to a glass of whiskey. Yeah. We have all faced the glass of whiskey, whether you're an artist or a business person or someone you know, who's, who works in you know, transportation, sanitation, mowing lawns yeah you built a relatable transcendent optic hmm. and i felt it i don't like whiskey but boy oh boy <laughs> have i faced the whiskey glass so bravo my friend thanks thanks so much and that's all yeah. i got on that reset yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well i i uh okay i, I want to know as a writer and a performer but i'm curious too because uh do you keep a notebook of lyrics or how do, how does it work for you? Or are you like a, are you a fly by the suit of your pants guy? Or do you, do you have a, do you have a plan? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is very exposing. This is a very uh -oh. vulnerable. Okay. So are you? <laughs> uh, Risa knows, okay, this is the cleanest my studio has ever been. And, uh -huh. and okay, look, if I'm honest, you see like that, like it, they're, they're, everything is kind of squished. <laughs> but like out of the view of the camera right now. Charlie, <laughs> I'm telling you, Risa and I, I think want to do like a, remember on MTV, they used to have one of those like cribs shows. Like oh, yeah. we want to go behind this. I want to know about the mess literally and figuratively behind that speaker during like, we're going to do part two versions of all I love that. Books. I love that. I it, love that. The, the truth is, man, I think the mess is part of it for me because as soon as this is over, as soon as I start to create something, <laughs> It's like, uh, I don't know, I'm just like as quickly to from point A to point B as possible. And then I'll clean, I'll worry about the mess later, you know? And, and so it, I think coming into like a, a disheveled space for me, somehow uh, it fuels creativity. I, you know, as far as notebooks, I have, 
I have maybe lost more songs than I've remembered. Mm. <laughs> so like, okay. like I, I, I have started just because I'm like, look, if I want to be a professional, <laughs> I've got to keep this stuff, you know, like this is, this is what we do. So um, I've started, you know, putting notes in my phone and, and stuff like that. But um, also you, you may notice when we're writing, I don't write anything down. I know. I, and, and so I, just, I just do it by memory. And part of it is I like that, you know, once you write it down, the picture has been taken. It's frozen. And wow. sometimes that's really good because you can lose what was great about the picture if you don't write it down. And so if no one's writing it down, I'll, I'll do that. But for me, like maybe I mess up the words and it's cooler. Maybe I, you know, mess up the melody and, and it, it ends up better. But um as far as like a notebook or whatever, I have like 50 of those uh, Moleskine, Moleskine, however you say it, <laughs> with just like a half a page written in it. And I'm like, I'm starting over because <laughs> so I need a different one. I need a new one. I'll do it right this time. Um, so no, I don't, I don't keep a great record of things, but I, I'm, I'm trying to be better about it. Yeah. I love it. Well, Charlie, listen, recent and I have so many questions on our list, but there is one actually really important one that we have for you right now, if you don't mind me asking. <laughs> okay. Charlie okay. Berry, are you ready for game time? Yes, I thought you would never ask. Let's go. <laughs> Well, Charlie, lucky for you, Risa and I each have our questions book. And uh, before we ask a question, we want to know, do you have like two numbers that are lucky for you in some way, shape or form? I have two numbers I really like. I don't know if they're lucky. <laughs> Go but, for it, baby. Okay, 43 and 92. 43, okay. 92, I love it. Risa, I'll do 43. Do you want to do 92? I'll do 92. Okay, so, oh, here it is, 43. Ready? I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the place that is kindred to the essence of who you are? Whoa. My gosh. Well, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna choose one, first of all. <laughs> I'm gonna take a couple. Okay. Take a couple. Um, hmm. I have to have a little New York City, just a little bit. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and I have to have a little, well, gosh, this is just my, this is just where my people live. Honestly, it's wherever my people are. Uh, Dallas, Texas, New York City, Nashville. Um, I feel like I've picked up a lot of those over the years and, uh, I wish I could say the beach, but I'm just like, you know, I kind of wear like black jeans at the beach. Like I don't really totally fit in. Charlie, <laughs> the mountains, me I don't know. and you both. Really? Okay. Oh, oh, I'm like, I walk around and my mother's like, Will, there's no funeral. We're at a beach. <laughs> yeah. Why are you in a full black garb? We get it, you're an artist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't censor me, mom. Yeah, mom, okay. <laughs> I love that, Charlie. So basically, essentially, where your people are. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, yes. Risa, go ahead, my love. Okay, question. Um, Is this from the book, or did you make well, this up? I, you, <laughs> you have them all memorized, one she, through 600. Okay, because you know me so well, I freaking lost the book, and I have to order a new one, so I thought about what question I would ask. <laughs> Ah! I, already, uh, I already know the question I'm asking you. So okay. by, the way, <laughs> by the way, we're keeping this all in. Yeah, ah! absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question number 92. Perfect, yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. What animal would you say best describes who you are? Again, not going to choose one. Okay. Ah! I uh, the body of a bear, the head of a bull, and the legs of a tiger. That's me. Wow. Uh, that have you answered that question? Before? I feel like you've thought about that. Um. So <laughs> before. So my little like publishing company that's like just my way to like register songs or whatever. Yeah. It's called it's called Three Halves Music, and it's half bear, half bull, and half tiger. Wait, Are you serious? that yeah. is amazing. Risa, did you know that? 
I had no idea. No, I've never no. told anybody that. Yeah, my wife doesn't know that because it's so lame. It's wow. not lame. Corey, you're going to love it. Only <laughs> on Talent Talk do we get exclusive. the exclusive. Charlie, on the same page, baby. Listen, Charlie, we are so grateful for your time today on Talent Talk. But before we sign off, we would love it if you wouldn't mind playing a little bit of your recently released single. Wish I would have said that. So that well, Risa I and I can do our weekly dance. I just so happen to have a guitar right here. Oh, wow. Pop it. <laughs> Baby, I love you. I know I don't say it enough. But I need you like crazy. I don't know why I got to make it so tough. I just want to hold you every day for the rest of my life. You're the only one I want standing next to me until the day I die. I wish I would have said that when you got mad. You started packing your bags. Last night we had a big fight. And you up and told me goodbye. I should have ran out the front door and chased after your taillights. So give me one more chance to get you back. Yeah, I wish I would have said that. Woo! Woo! Charlie Berry, thank you so much. Um, for the audience to know, for more on Charlie, you can read more about him right below this video. But in the meantime, as things open up, when Charlie is in your city, go see him. And I am not yet his best friend like Risa is, but hopefully one day I can be an honorary BFF. I'm into it. Uh, yeah. I've, I've been Me looking too. for a BFF. <laughs> Charlie, God bless you. And Risa, you're the best. Risa, you bring the most incredible <laughs> artists in, in human beings to this show week after week. And um, I'm so grateful for you, my friend. Um, I love you. And this would never happen if you didn't reconnect with me. And so thank you. Um, and yeah, I think, I mean, you're an artist too, right? So your community of people, you know, they're good people. They're just beautiful souls. So I feel honored to be with you and, and Charlie and everyone that comes on. So. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you to Phoenix for presenting this amazing series week after week, bringing great people together who happen to also be incredible artists, spreading love and light in a time when we need it most. Charlie Berry, thank you. Risa Binder, thank you. And thank you all for watching. <laughs>